Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. I'm Micah. This is Sarah. We're the lead pastors at the Vine Church here in Pasco, Washington. So today, uh, this Sunday is a special Sunday. We're doing Baptism Sunday this week and we have at least three baptisms happening. We'll see what, what develops as the morning goes on as well. We're super excited about that. I love watching baptisms. I love being a part of baptisms. And it's always such a joyous occasion. It's such a celebratory time. As I was thinking back on baptisms this week, there's one really memorable baptism <laughs> that comes to mind. And you know, when you say the word memorable, you never know what kind of story it's going to be. But there was a really memorable baptism because we went to a camp near Goldendale with, um, with a church group and someone wanted to be baptized. But here's the thing, it was in the middle of winter <laughs> and there was no baptistry there. There was a small creek that went through the camp um, and, and there was a beaver on that creek. And so the, there was a beaver dam. And so there was a small pool, a couple small pools that had formed because of the beaver dam. And so um, this guy was so committed, so dedicated, so ready to be baptized that there are people out there picking at the ice because the creek had iced over, picking at the ice, making a hole so that they could go in to this icy water and be baptized. It was, it took dedication. I mean, I was standing there cold and I wasn't even in the ice water. <laughs> you, you call it memorable. Imagine that guy being baptized. That was a memorable moment. He's not going to forget that at all. In his life, absolutely. <laughs> Are we going to do that? Are we going to put ice water, ice in the... Not ice water, okay. no. In fact, <laughs> we have a hot tub warmed to perfect temperature. So uh, let's talk a little bit about baptism today. Uh, we'll do just, uh, I'll do a brief historical uh, run through here and then we'll look at some scripture um, as we consider baptism and what it is and what it means and mm -hmm. why we practice it today. So um, prior to Israel and throughout history, many nations and different religions or people groups um, had ceremonial washings. It's kind of a natural illustration for the idea of being cleansed or a new season in life. Um, so Israel had practices that revolved around ceremonial washings. Uh, in the intertestamental period, that's the time between the prophets and when Jesus mm -hmm. came to earth, um, the idea of baptism kind of developed and seemed to have heightened to some extent because early in Jesus' ministry, at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, in fact, uh, we see Jesus going out to a man named John the Baptist, uh, who was uh, out in the desert, a unique character in Scripture, and uh, but he's uh, um, attracting crowds of people, many, yeah. many people out into the desert to be baptized. And and John preached a baptism of, of repentance. Mm -hmm. So uh, repentance is the idea of turning around and going a different direction. Uh, so he said, come, uh, start a new chapter in life. Repent and be baptized was the invitation of John. And so, in fact, at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, uh, in fact, his baptism is what marks the beginning of his now earthly public ministry. Um, Jesus goes out to, to John the Baptist and he says, I want to be baptized. And John says, this doesn't seem right. If anything, you should be baptizing me, John. He, he didn't knows. have anything to repent of. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely yeah. right. So it's very interesting to see Jesus out there mm -hmm. um, uh, engaged in this practice. And uh, Jesus says, no, this is, this is right. Um, and so uh, John the Baptist uh, baptizes him, and, um, and Jesus' ministry begins with that moment. And as I think about that story, I love God's response to Jesus' baptism. And so I want to read a couple verses from Matthew 3, starting in verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I love that response from God the Father. A voice from heaven says, This is my Son, a, a public declaration of Jesus's identity. This is my son whom I loved and with whom I'm well pleased. And the spirit of God descends on him 
like a dove in, in, this, in this instance. But as we're baptized, and as we're talking about baptism today, I think God's response is very, very similar to what mm. God said here at Jesus' baptism. God proclaims over us, this is my child whom I love. And friends, that's why we celebrate. This is why today is going to be such a joyous occasion. We celebrate because we get to experience God's acceptance and God's love. We, we get to witness as people find their true identity as a loved child of God in this step of their journey of walking with God. Absolutely. Okay, so with that, Jesus' ministry has begun, and we read in the gospel accounts that uh, Jesus baptized people as well. Now, uh, it does clarify it wasn't him specifically, but the uh, disciples that were baptizing the people that responded, which in a sense kind of makes sense to me. Just imagine the claim you get to make if you were baptized <laughs> by Jesus himself, right? Uh, that's got to uh, be big bragging rights. But in fact, it, uh, apparently Jesus didn't do the baptizing, um, but it was a part of his ministry that one of the ways that people responded to his message and the good news as he traveled from town to town and he, as he spoke in the synagogues, as he preached, as he taught people on mountainsides, one of the responses that we do read uh, is that people chose to be baptized, marking a new season in life, uh, maybe continuing the idea of repentance that uh, Jesus was baptized by John into, uh, but marking a new season in their lives. Now, after Jesus' death and resurrection, um, the church is to begin, right? Uh, Jesus has promised, I'll send the Holy Spirit. Um, and he's he's spoken of Peter, you know, you'll be the rock that, that, that this church is built on. So the church is to begin. And in fact, it does at Pentecost. And it's this remarkable event where um, people are hearing in their own language, Jewish people from all nations have come here to Jerusalem for Pentecost. And um, in a miraculous uh, turn of events, um, the apostles are preaching and people are hearing in their native tongue, in their language, um, uh, this message of hope and good news. And at some point, uh, the, the message has to do with, hey, uh, <laughs> you've crucified the Son of God, like the Messiah has come, he's been crucified. It says the people were cut to, to, to the heart and they said, what do we do? What can we do now? Uh, and and, and uh, Peter replies to them in Acts 2.38, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will, will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's this beautiful passage, and I don't necessarily equate one-to-one -one everything in there revolving around baptism, but it is this conglomeration of invitation and hope to new life. So repentance, so turn. Move in a new direction, he's saying to the people there. Uh, be baptized in the name of Jesus. Receive forgiveness of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so today in the church, we continue to live into these invitations, these promises practices, uh, to uh, an invitation that whatever has happened, wherever we have been, whatever we have done, there's an invitation to forgiveness, to repentance, to new life, to baptism, to walking with God as we receive the Holy Spirit. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. So the first century church leaders continued to teach baptism. And so we just want to look at a couple of places in the New Testament where the first century church leaders taught baptism. First off, let's look, go to Romans 6 verse 4. And this is what Paul writes. We are therefore buried with him, with Jesus, through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So Romans, it says we were buried with him through baptism in order that just as Jesus raised, we too may raise to new life. And so we see here in this passage how baptism symbolizes this death and then resurrection, similar to what, what Jesus experienced, death on the cross when he was buried and then he rose again, that baptism symbolizes this death and then this rising to new life. So there's this imagery of being buried under the waters of baptism, that we're dying to an old way of living and then we're being raised to life 
in Jesus, to a new life in Jesus, so that we might experience life differently and live life differently. You know, in a vacuum, that would seem a very morbid uh, illustration and idea, very, very dark, right? And, and yet, as followers of Jesus, central to the idea of who Jesus was and uh, identifying who he was, uh, was the fact that he died on a cross and that he was, in fact, uh, risen from the dead, that, that he rose again uh, to new life. And so, in light of Jesus, uh, his death, his burial, and resurrection, the invitation to us, of course, is also to new life. Yeah. And so baptism is a way of kind of living out, reliving this idea, I have risen to new life. And that's what the emphasis is on, mm -hmm. the resurrection, the new life, the yes. new life piece. Jesus yes. says, I have come that, that you may have life and have life to the full. And so there's this abundant life found in Jesus. It's a life full of grace and mercy, forgiveness and love. It's a life committed to loving God and loving people, a life committed to walking with the Spirit of God. It's just this this full, rich life that we are invited to that does look very different than our old way of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, one of, um, as a church, we talk a lot about belong, believe, become, mm -hmm. and in that order. Um, and uh, baptism is this really beautiful and interesting mm -hmm. place in that uh, believe and become mm -hmm. phase of our our Christian walks and our, our spiritual journeys. Um, it's this point where we say, declare publicly, uh, I believe in Jesus. In mm -hmm. fact, a part of baptism, we invite people to make a confession. Do you believe Jesus is the son of God and lived, died and offers us hope and new life, right? And people get to say, yes, I believe that before they're dunked under the waters of baptism, right? Um, but it's also um, a phase in the journey where uh, he promises new life, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're on that journey now of becoming, of transformation, and it's already begun. The Spirit has been at work in our lives, but it marks a new season in which we invite the Spirit to transform our lives. Galatians chapter 3, 26 mm -hmm. is another passage we wanted to glance at real briefly today. Um, so in Jesus Christ, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Number of beautiful ideas and, and theme, themes in here. Uh, we are children of God. Now, this is beautiful language to an Israelite ear, right? This idea of having been adopted into the family of God. You are children of God. We read that language throughout the New Testament. Uh, you are children of God through faith, and you have been clothed in Christ. You have been covered by Christ. Um, the idea here is um, to make his character and way of life our own. Like, we are uh, in the eyes of God, seen it, it, through Christ, mm -hmm. seen as mm -hmm. Christ. We are being transformed more and more into the image of Christ, and it transforms the way we live. This new life is defined by Jesus Christ. We are covered in him. And there's so many beautiful things that come out of this commitment to live life um, submitted to Christ and to be in Christ. And I love the results that of this that is spoken of in the very next verse here in Galatians. In Galatians 3, um, continues on in verse 28, and it says this, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Faith in Jesus is described as this great equalizer. And so here you see three divisions that are listed that were um, just societal hierarchies and barriers in, in society in the first century here. And we see here clearly, clearly that new life in Jesus presents um, this opportunity for, for equality and to be one mm -hmm. in Jesus, to be united, that the hierarchies and the social barriers of this world aren't transferred over into the kingdom of God, but rather that everyone, as they're baptized into Christ Jesus, they're seen by God as equally loved children of God. And so as we talk about new life, 
And we talk about being clothed with Christ, taking on his character and his way of life. We get to experience all sorts of new realities. And one of them is equality and opportunity. That's awesome. That's beautiful. So today is Baptism Sunday. Now, um, a number of people today are um, choosing to give their lives to Christ and or to mark a new season in yeah. their journey with Jesus today. Now, knowing that you're watching this online, well, we recognize that you didn't have an opportunity to be a part of that but the beautiful invitation is that we can do baptism anytime uh, whether that <laughs> yes. means setting up our, our baptistry here at the church or uh, walking down to the river and uh, mm -hmm. and being baptized um, we want you to know that you're invited you are invited if you have never walked with Christ but are, are ready to make a confession of faith ready to repent to turn in a new direction in life if, mm -hmm. if you're ready to begin a new season in life Baptism is a beautiful way to mark that moment in your life, in your mm -hmm. Christian journey. And so we want you to know you're invited. You're welcome to reach out to us, and we would love to be a part of either studying and praying together about the decision you might want to make, and or if you are ready, uh, the water is ready as well. And uh, so we would love to be a part of that next step in your journey, if you would like. Let's uh, conclude here with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for this invitation to know you lord to walk with you and so god so many of us are just so excited today to witness um these baptisms that are about to happen and lord we just say thank you we thank you that this invitation is for for everyone and we thank you that you are faithful and that you are loving, Lord, that you are constantly inviting us to come to you to experience grace and mercy and forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you for this new life that is promised in you. Teach us, Lord, continue to transform us that we might live fully into this new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friends, thanks for joining us today. We can't wait to see you again soon and pray you have a blessed week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.